so, you know, in the interest of time, I want to thank everybody for coming. Um, this is our second community chat. And um, I just want to say that this one is interesting because I wanted to make a special announcement that now that we've done hosting, we've kind of ventured into the arcade stream that Tim's taking over. The next big announcement we have is we're doing single house movie theaters called Reclaim the Movies. And they're going to be all over the U.S. and Canada. And then hopefully we'll move into Europe. And so like this may not be interested to a lot of people in higher ed, but like this is the direction we're going. I think movie theaters are the future. And so we're hoping you'll join us on this ride. And that's the first I'm hearing of that. Uh, yeah. You should, if that's really, if that's really. No, it's not really. <laughs> I was going to say, if, if, if it's really the case, you got to call me this week because there is a seven plex in Pasadena <laughs> that is in the midst of changing hands and we can get you seven screens next week. <laughs> Could you imagine? Don't tell Tim that. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. There's there's no movie. It was just a joke to start this off. How, how many cloudlets are we at now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're at two. It uh, looks like it's going down. <laughs> so anyway, I, I'll do a quick um, just hello, which I already said, but I'll say again, and thank you for coming. And then also, <laughs> that's my bell. You know, 2022 is quickly shaping up to be the year of Reclaim Cloud for us. And it's interesting because it touches pretty much every part of Reclaim from support to infrastructure to um, sales and now to our new and you'll hear more about group that we're starting to shape called educational technology or instructional tech. And it's pretty exciting to see what that involves. And in fact, it's personally really exciting for me because it returns me to a moment. And I was talking with Andy Rush, who was a colleague back at UMW, and I know there's some UMW folks in the room. It returns me back to a moment in say 2005, 2006, when we were experimenting with those newfangled web 2.0 tools like WordPress that no one had heard of or MediaWiki or you know, um, Coppermine or some other things that no one will ever hear of again. And we're kind of moving into that moment with Reclaim Cloud, with exploring some of what's possible, what we can run and what we can do with Docker. And the Educational Technology Group is helping us kind of crystallize that. So you'll hear a lot more about that. And I know Lauren blogged recently about some of the excitement. So I'll let her kind of also talk a bit about that, but I wanna welcome you. And then you'll hear from everybody around Reclaim Hosting, not just me, luckily for you, about what's happening, where we're going and what we're excited about. So Lauren, go for it. Thanks, Jim. Uh, yeah. Basically, ditto everything Jim just said. Um, we're very excited. Thank you all for joining today. This is our second community chat, so still fairly new, but I'm just really excited and super jazzed for the opportunity now to just be able to connect with folks on a very regular basis. That's some of the work that we were already doing, but now instructional tech, for example, is allowing us to be more intentional and have more capacity for those sorts of, um, I guess, projects or activities. So. Yeah, I'd like to just say how excited we are for some of these changes to come at Reclaim uh, to our team and company culture, for instance, new projects and services we're considering, and then also our goals for this year and beyond. Um, today will really just be about sharing that work that we're doing in hopes of maybe connecting with some of you all that are maybe interested in some of this stuff, or maybe you're doing it too, and it will just maybe create places for us to continue to connect about that. Um, another thing I'll say, I guess, is just a little bit about my role at Reclaim, which is involves a little bit of everything, but I mostly like to help lay good foundations just to make sure people can connect about these things. So laying down pathways for this work to happen. Um, so that's all I'll really say for now. Um, and I'll push it over to Tim uh, to maybe chat a little bit about an exciting project we have in the works. Tim. Sure. So my world has not even recently for the past year or so, but uh, even more so in the past few months been consumed uh, with these things behind me. And so <laughs> uh, for those who don't know, I, I'm the owner operator uh, of everything for Reclaim Arcade and pretty much spend most of my time working on that. Um, but I did make it a goal at the end of last year in my discussions with the team. I said, I do still want to be very connected 
in certain ways to reclaim hosting. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll never be completely gone. Obviously, I'm not, you probably will never see me in a support ticket again, um, again, to your, to your favor, maybe. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I want to help on some of the long term thinking projects. And one in particular, is actually one that we've been talking about what seems like since the very beginning of reclaim hosting in fact um you know i have a good blog post and um i don't know if i should have done this ahead of time but i'm going to try share my screen and hopefully uh y'all can see that the colors look odd on my end do they look weird on yours looks good for me okay good uh, must just be the thumbnail for me um so i have a blog post here uh it's at blog.timowens.io and it's the most recent one um, I occasionally do still blog <laughs> and, and it was sort of thinking through my thoughts. I'd encourage you maybe after this, if you're curious to hear more about some of the history behind this, um, to look into it. So I actually have pictures from when Jim and I invited Ken Lane to come talk with us in 2014. It was a really exciting time for us, not only because, you know, we had a few domain the one's own schools under our belt. We were feeling like an established company. I was going full time with Reclaim Hosting um, starting in the new year. And so and we were actually able to pay someone to come talk to us. We were actually able to like have Ken come out, fly out and talk to us about APIs. And we just we felt like we were putting on our big boy pants for a little bit. And we talked about containers. We talked about, um, you know, URLs and life bits and APIs and what a structure for that might look at like and then we've never stopped talking about it so we would go to workshops like byu's wonderful api workshop uh in utah uh and we would talk about the domain api and what an api for domain of one's own could look like and so coming back to that i said you know i i couldn't help in october of this year as we were thinking forward about what we could work on i thought this might be something for me to return to. This might be something that I could play a role in trying to nudge forward, especially having folks like Pilot and Taylor and Gautam and others uh, new to our team to help support that in ways that we hadn't been able to do before. Having structures like Reclaim Cloud under our belt um, to have technology and power that we didn't have before to be able to you know, realize this dream. And so... We've been meeting each week to talk, or sorry, not each week, each month, we have a standing meeting where we kind of just say, what are our long, what are our short term goals to kind of keep moving the ball down the field? Uh, and so in the last meeting, uh, I said, I want to work on a very basic API. And the idea behind this, I, I'm not a great developer. I'll tell you that right now. Like if you, people start digging into their domain of one's own code, I'm sorry. I just I'll say that right now. I apologize. Um, I'm not a great developer, but I felt like we could make a proof of concept, something where we would essentially say you would have a generic call, something like create a user and something would happen in the back end that would take that call and work with whatever software was necessary at that time. And that's for us what the power of the domains API is, is that you don't have to talk in a language of WHMCS. You don't have to talk about cPanel. You don't have to talk about Logic Boxes or Enom or any of those other companies. It would be a generic API that anybody could build on top of that would use whatever services we need at the time, as well as any future services that we wanted to drop in and replace with. And that's powerful for us. Not so, uh, you know, the least of which because prices with cPanel and WHMCS licensing have gone through the roof. And so we always knew that was a liability to kind of put all of our cards on certain software and services, especially ones that were in open source. And so this is as much future proofing as anything for us. And so what does that look like? Um, in the past month, what I did is I set up a very basic Apache server and I said, I just want to take in um, post and get calls and translate them into whatever software we're using. Um, I won't show you any of the back end of this, but what's also really interesting to show you about this, and I can show you a little documentation, is it feeds onto another idea, which Chris will talk about a little bit more in depth on the infrastructure side, which is about some new security things that we're doing that may prove useful for other services as well. So let me share my screen again, and I'm going to go to api.reclaimhosting.com. And I'd say you could go there too, but you can't. And the reason that you can't is that we're using Cloudflare to restrict access to it. Um, you know, this is going to be an API that has access to internal systems. 
And eventually I'll need to add authentication into it, right? There'll need to be ways where you could get an API token um, or that you could distribute them or, you know, whatever access we decide might be necessary. For now, I said, I'll just restrict it by IP address. That'll be easy enough. But what's exciting about Cloudflare and the way we're doing it is we're using a service of theirs called uh, Cloudflare Teams. And it's what's called a zero trust security framework. And what's beautiful about this is it's based on domains. It's not based on any software that has to be installed on any server. And so I, as have routing DNS through Cloudflare, it allows me to say, anybody going to api.reclaimhosting.com, they have to have this IP to get access to it. And I don't have to do anything with firewalls. I don't have to worry about what system it's running. It could run any software in the world. It doesn't matter because Cloudflare is the one directing the traffic before it even hits the server itself. And so I can go in here and I can edit and I can add my IP address in here. I'm going to grab it real quick. And so we've got a bypass rule where I can add in IP, IP address, let's add this one in here. And we'll just save that policy. And now if I refresh this page, I get access to the domains API. And so here's what's um, really awesome about that is you can think about the zero trust framework in the same way of what if I wanted to restrict access to our domain of one's own platform to just people who had a uh, unf.edu email address? Or what if I wanted to restrict WHM to just people with these specific email addresses or these specific IP ranges? Uh, we can do things like that now, which is kind of exciting. We're not doing anything with the software itself. We're restricting the URL. So we're restricting the front end of applications and not worrying about what particular technology those applications are using. So that's pretty exciting. And then the other thing that I'm using with this is Postman. For the first time, I'm using Postman to build out API calls and then have it generate documentation for the API automatically. And so I've only done a very few things. Um, we're working with installing applications remotely with Installatron, adding users uh, to WHMCS, and adding services, uh, adding products to cPanel, uh, hosting accounts in this particular case. But WHMCS, Installatron, and cPanel, those are all things that could be swapped out. Those are never referenced in the API whatsoever. It's simply add a user with their information, and it gets added somewhere. Installing an application and then you know, choosing what that application would be and whether it's going to the cloud or cPanel or somewhere else entirely can be changed in the future. It can be changed on a per application basis. And so that's the idea around the domains API. That's where it stands right now. And I'm really excited about it. I think there's a lot of potential and possibilities, not only for what we can develop on top. And obviously at the forefront of our mind is what does an onboarding process look like for domain of one's own in the future? where we don't have to make weird decisions like choosing a domain before you've installed a piece of software, where we don't have to make weird decisions like what's the subdomain before I install WordPress and you know uh, what's your account information before you've done something. We can change the workflow entirely because we can decide what order we wanna do things and then make those calls in the back end to make it happen. So I think we can have a really interesting user experience, but I think we can also then open it up to the community to start thinking through what do they wanna build on top of domains? What do they wanna do with the framework that we've created to create something new? And that's kind of an exciting future as well. So that's what I've been working on with the team, um, particularly with the instructional technology team and the help of Taylor. Taylor's been working on some of the front end UI. And so that's where we're going right now. And it's a lot of baby steps and I think that's okay. I think we, we can know somewhat generally where we wanna head and then just say, what can we do next month to get a little bit of the way there and kind of like, you know, as we've said all along, build the plane while we're flying it. Thanks. Um, yeah, I think uh, some of the, the domains API stuff is really exciting for us going f future, like as you said, in, in baby steps. Um, and the, the cool thing, I think, for even early parts of the project is I think we've been able to already kind of use some of the things that we're learning um, and, and demonstrating there or elsewhere. So like the Cloudflare um, access, uh, zero trust access stuff is stuff we're already using. Um, I'm going to kind of pass it off to 
our infrastructure team to kind of talk about some of the things they're doing. Some of that ties in here as well. So, yeah, like Taylor said, uh, we are utilizing Cloudflare access for zero trust. Uh, we, ne we haven't necessarily added it to any servers uh, quite yet, but I've been doing some testing in securing our internal servers with uh, Cloudflare-based subdomains that will only allow uh, reclaim hosting uh, employees access. Uh, but that goes on. Security has been a big focus for the infrastructure team uh, in the first months of 2022. It, what year is it? Uh, we've been looking for better and additional ways to secure infrastructure, like with Cloudflare Access, uh, based on conversations that we had in late 2021. Uh, definitely automating things has been easier. We've been able to include the creation of those Cloudflare subdomains to protect our servers automatically. Uh, and Ansible has been a great help. That's pretty much all infrastructure has been doing right now, working on security, dealing with problems, putting fires out. So, uh, only that. Yeah, only <laughs> those things. Anything secure in online. <laughs> I think Scott Leslie tweeted the other day no one has any idea just how much work it is to keep things up, not to only just keep going, but just to keep it up. So, thank you, infrastructure. Big fan. So, you, uh, oh, yeah, go ahead. No, no. Yeah, th that's pretty much all infrastructure has been working on, keeping things running, uh, playing around with the tools that Tim and Taylor were talking about to keep things more secure. Uh, I guess I'll pass it off to Meredith to discuss about uh, support. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Um, so as a whole, our like Reclaim has always been centered in support and supporting the community and everything like that. So. Um, as a result, we've kind of just been working together as a team across Reclaim, so not just in support, but across the infrastructure team, account management and sales, and now instructional technology, just to make sure we're all trained up on all of our processes and internally, um, externally with different, different features. So um, just the last couple of months, we've been really focusing on um, Reclaim Cloud training um, to get up to speed as we've kind of moved into working with Reclaim Cloud a lot more these days um, as well. And um, particularly last month, you've probably seen in the newsletter um, that we worked a lot with managed hosting um, and WordPress multi-site documentation and all of that good stuff. So um, Gordon, Paul, and I as the, so the core support team have also been working um, within the other groups to train them um, to train Pilot and Taylor as they take on more of a frontline role within tickets. Um, so you'll see a friendly face from Reclaim if you submit a ticket to, to, to us, um, not just from the core support team, but everybody. So we've really just focused on making sure we're all comfortable in what we're working with um, as well. So um, and and just like more. That. Sorry. No, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I really like that everyone at Reclaim has support experience. You know, I think it's really important that we all are aware of the types of questions that are being asked from our community and we know how to support the basics and we have a core team that's, you know, there to help troubleshoot, but, you know, anyone coming in to Reclaim these days is gonna have support experience, which I think is really unique and pretty cool. And I might sound old right now, so forgive me, but there's also been a lot of movement on the blogs. Right. Tim even blogged. I know, Meredith, you've been blogging your Reclaim Cloud learning. Um, it's been really nice. And that's just a, a double up on the monthly newsletter, which we will be releasing at the end of every month with a kind of a quick synopsis of what we were working on. And I think hopefully a lot will come out of that. But I don't want to steal anyone's thunder for more things. But like that's been really cool to see for me personally. <laughs> the blog lives. Yeah, absolutely. And so uh, I think that also brings up a good a good option for the learning to happen, not within the ticket, but we take the time to then step aside and do some more intentional learning on aspects of it um, and continue with the multiple channels of Reclaim itself, not just through email, um, through our, our blogs, through um, screen shares and other things like that. So it's just really cool to see. And um, working with Lauren too to kind of lay those those frameworks down, um, like she mentioned earlier, is really exciting, which we'll continue on with um, the sales side. Um, and I think Pilot's got some updates there as well. Yeah, thank you, Meredith. Um, I've, as Meredith said, I've been doing some work 
with support lately, um, both on the ticketing and answering people's questions and, and also often when support gets news of a new project, something fun and exciting that people are interested in trying out, that gets sent to me and I can talk to people about what they're planning and how we can best support them. Um, so you may or may not have gotten emails from me. Uh, it's I've been here about five months, so 50, 50 shot. I don't know if that's how numbers work. It's how I think of it. Um, I also take a lot of meetings with people, again, thinking about their projects and how we can best support them, how we can plan things going forward and what they'll need. Um, this means that I do a lot of domain of one's own training these days, um, helping people learn about the systems that they're using, helping them get their footing. And then as we sort of transition them to be able to support the systems, I also work a lot with instructional technology, thinking about making plans for the future, how they can grow and engage their communities, how they can develop sustainable practices for the future, all of that sort of thing that Taylor's gonna talk about in a little bit. Um, one of the other things that I do a lot of, actually most of Jim just alluded to is Reclaim Roundup, which is our new newsletter that we've been talking about we've been talking about. We released the first one in January. So you may or may not have seen it. It was pretty recent. Um, but the purpose of the roundup was originally conceptualized as there's a lot that Reclaim does that isn't technically behind the scenes, but it's distributed across so many channels that maybe people don't see it, or it's not something that gets publicized. Uh, uh, and I see how we can, oh, yes, Jim's got you. Um, things that are distributed across so many networks that you maybe don't see them, things that don't really get publicized, like the new documentation that we have every month. And the idea of the roundup is really that it's a roundup. It's the announcements of the exciting things that we've been doing that month, but it's also a collection of just information about all of the work and projects that have gone on. So last month's newsletter featured a couple of announcements about our new MSA, about the uh, deprovisioning of cloud Linux, things like that, but also our new community chat, which is what you're here for right now. Um, Taylor hosts and runs those and he does a great job. But also, as Jim said, a lot of blogging going on, a roundup of all of the blogging that we did that month, and then a roundup of all of the documentation that we published. So things that you maybe wouldn't see if you don't follow everybody's Twitter or you don't obsessively comb our documentation page looking for things that you maybe hadn't noticed before. Um, the idea of the roundup is really to bring all of the work that we do and make it more front facing and more accessible to people so that when we put out resources, people know where to go for them and people know how to use them. Um, that's really the extent of what I tend to do. Um, I'm going to hand it off to Taylor because, again, we overlap a lot in terms of thinking about what the future of Reclaim can be and what the future of your projects can be. Talking about how to communicate with you all about what you can do, make that possible. Thanks. Um, so um, I'm going to talk a little bit about, oh, I, I'm Taylor, um, and I, I'm pretty new to Reclaim uh, a couple months, but um, my uh, my role is community instructional technologist. So I've been thinking a lot about uh, ed tech and instructional tech at Reclaim and sort of, um, you know, how that fits and how it can kind of improve the experience of using some of the things that we offer. Um the instructional tech at Reclaim is very much an emerging thing that that um, the group is kind of thinking about. Um, we right now we have like weekly meetings with uh, Lauren Pilot, Jim, and I, and we just kind of chat about like, well, you know, sort of what areas do does this group kind of uh, can it bridge the gap between, you know, um, between sometimes support or sales and infrastructure and the things that don't quite fit in any one of those categories. Um, we think a lot about how we're, we can work with admins and technologists and instructional designers and 
the greater community of folks using stuff at Reclaim and um, how we can maybe tinker with some tools around Domain of One's Own or in shared hosting or uh, particularly a lot recently, a lot around Reclaim Cloud and kind of demonstrate use cases, try to find people's pain points that they are often running into and what can we do to sort of solve the problems there. So um, we've been talking a lot about, you know, where those things are most needed. Um, and we're kind of starting to figure out what, um, you know, sort of consultative services may look like at Reclaim around EdTech or work, uh, more regular workshop offerings. Um, the community chats, this is one of the first things that has sort of come out of instructional tech at Reclaim. And this is something we want to continue to offer to have sort of informal connecting points and, and check-ins with whoever is interested, really. Um, so, uh, and, and we're even thinking about potentially what does like professional development in the ed tech space kind of look like? Can we contribute to that? Is that something people even want or are interested in? Um, so we're even starting to think about like, you know, we, we talk a lot about Docker and container technology around Reclaim Cloud, and that is a, you know, proven technology that, you know, uh, has been used in cloud environments and by IT groups and developers for years now at this point, several, many years, um, but is sort of impenetrable if you haven't been able to work with it before. And so can we offer things that would help people learn about that and become familiar and, and in turn enable new things at their institutions or for them personally? So we've been thinking a lot about what can be offered and, and you know, what people may be interested in. Um, I, I'd also say if you're interested in any of the things I've, I've mentioned here around EdTech at Reclaim, um, I would highly recommend checking out um, both uh, Jim and Lauren each blogged about EdTech at Reclaim and sort of documenting like what we're talking about, what we're interested in. Um, I'll ha definitely have those links in the, um, the, well, I just put them in the chat. So they're, they're there. Um, and uh, I'll have them in the follow-up uh, post on the Reclaim hosting community um, page. Um, some other things that were that that I'm kind of interested in, we've been we've been talking about um, that are uh, potentially uh, nearer projects. <laughs> some of them far <laughs> um, that we haven't figured out exactly yet. Um, is uh, I'm kind of interested in doing more sort of informal uh, streams around Docker containers and running applications in Reclaim Cloud, and um, potentially even doing things like you know, hey, I'm going to investigate this app that I'm going to try out. I haven't done much prior research and it may not work because I haven't done my research yet, but kind of showing the process of how you can kind of uh, work with these tools. What are the questions you need to be thinking about and answering, documenting that process a little bit. Um, I, we are also uh, thinking about, you know, different types of integrations between tools we can help with. Um, thing that has come up a lot that I'm interested in and others have expressed interest in the community is web archiving. And uh, what there are a lot of tools around that, but nothing uh, specifically that meets, you know, everyone has little different needs around that kind of thing. So uh, what can we contribute to there? Um, I saw that uh, someone raised their hand to speak. So uh, Larry. Uh, Larry, yeah, here. And, uh, uh, you can go ahead and unmute. I'm, I'm I'm so sorry. I'm working on two different machines. I must have oh. had my cursor in the wrong one. Oh yeah, no problem. Um, it's cool to know that feature works, right? And is there? <laughs> I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> exactly. <right. laughs> so that's cool. One um, of the cool things, though, Taylor, I think is, you know, obviously we want to. I like the idea of like streaming some of the work platforms we're playing with on Reclaim Cloud, and also, Larry, to your point in the chat, like. You all telling us, and I, you know, someone said this on Twitter just recently based on Lauren's post. And instructional technology, obviously, like that's where kind of reclaim hosting came from, our roots at UMW. And 
returning to it is both really exciting, but also we don't know what folks need and what they want. And we're not offering anything until we really understand that and have the ability to play with that. And I think that early idea of getting out and doing streams, talking about the applications in the cloud, we do think that that's a technology that ed tech groups are going to want to know more about and be familiar with that. We are kind of investing our time in that, kind of like we did with cPanel and Bluehost in 2005, 2006. So it's logical. But the other thing that I'm really super excited about with Reclaim Hosting right now is that folks like Gautam, Pilot, and Taylor come from domain of one's own schools. Like the community is kind of in some ways porous. And we want to actually be able to spend time with these various groups across the country or even the world doing some of this stuff to think through this with you. And we want to know the best way that happens. And that's not something we have figured out, nor are we coming in here with like, here's what we have, right? I think it will only come out of uh, collaboration. So I really appreciate that. And in fact, the folks who came from our various schools who now work with us have made us energized us. And I think Ed Beck said that yesterday when we were talking in the New York City DH. She, he said, I think there's a new energy at Reclaim Hosting right now. And I think that's kind of why we did the state of Reclaim is we feel energized with what's possible and we want to work with folks on that. Like we want to explore that together because like the Docker, the container, it's trailing edge technology again. So that's right up our alley. Like we can manage that because it's been around for 10 years now. So I think it's cool. Taylor, I'm sorry to, to cut you off, but I just wanted to throw you, Pilot and Gavin, some necessary love and coming in and kind of reinvigorating us and what we're doing. So thanks. Uh, yeah, you, you kind of didn't cut me off at all, actually, because I, I was gonna say that, that sort of put a put a bow on um, sort of the instructional tech stuff in terms of, um, I guess the only other thing I wanted to add to that segment um, is um, we're also definitely open to suggestions in terms of what people might uh, be interested in. You know, if you've you've got a project and you're like, I don't really know if this has a place, but you just want to talk about it. Definitely willing to talk about it. Um, and uh, willing to take suggestions there. Cause like, like I said, we're, we're very much uh, figuring out like uh, what exactly the niche will end up being, because I'm sure it will change and move over time at reclaim, you know, the needs of ed tech in a group, like ours is different than the needs of ed tech in an institution. So uh, while we can imagine some possibilities, I'm most interested in what people are themselves looking for, if, if they're looking for. It's like that U2 song. And they still haven't found what they're looking for. <laughs> I can run. Well, Data set. <laughs> The other thing I'll say to hopefully get Jim to stop singing um, <laughs> is maybe just, you know, reiterating a part from my blog post that I wrote yesterday, because you can tell this is where my head is, but just really thinking about the values that Reclaim has and making sure that we continue to instill those values, even as we potentially expand the types of projects or you know, services that we can take on. So, you know, I'm really proud that Reclaim has always gone, gone above and beyond with the type of support that we provide. Uh, you know, regardless of what we are hosting in-house, we're always, you know, willing to say, all right, let us take a look as a courtesy. We'll see what we can do and at least offer some guidance, even if it's not super in our wheelhouse. And I think that that mindset and, Th those priorities, we still need to make sure we're keeping even as we are adding on a potentially consultative part to what we're doing um, and making sure that, OK, you know, even if we start doing this stuff over here, we're still going above and beyond and we're, you know, not putting everything behind a paywall, you know, like that. That idea is still really important for me. Um, and I also, you know, just like the idea that we're kind of you know, I want to lean into the community and see what you all need and not, you know, 
come to the table thinking like we have all of the answers here, but really just listening to you all, um, getting a sense of what you need, and then we kind of build it from there. So Taylor, I'm not sure if you have any other um, goals for the rest of this time, or if we want to maybe see if others have questions or want to chat or perfect time for questions. Conversation. Perfect time for questions. If, if folks uh, have any about anything we've talked about, or um, you can throw them in the chat, um, you can, you know, unmute and speak, whatever is your preferred way. Um, and uh, we'll kind of hang out and see what uh, what people yeah. come up with. Yeah. Um, and you can, uh, Nessia, um, if you want to just unmute, um, love to hear from you. Yeah. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Cool. Um, so I'm from Lansing Community College. Um, and so we are a community college. And from my understanding, our person who does our domains of one own, one's own program is a faculty member. Um, and so they like they work in our Center for Teaching Excellence uh, uh, on time to do that. And so we've been trying to figure out how to manage this big program project that we have. And I know that the difference for community college versus university, um, there's gonna be some there. And so just, I know you all have a wealth of information, but I find it a little daunting trying to figure out things. So I'm looking for um, best or like ideas, suggestions for how to kind of go. I know there's the community, I know there's your uh, support docs and I, there's I, I, every time I have to send something to support, they're always super fast and helpful. Um, so just, I'm wondering if you all have any suggestions about Kind of combing through this stuff and where to start because we have some understanding of it but we have like a lot that we're trying to achieve so um yeah i mean obviously depending on what you're um feeling like you need the most help with that that would change my answer a little bit um i will say you know first of all if you are looking for something that is not so much a hey this is busted or it's not working in the way I expect, um, still feel free to send that question in to our support. And we can definitely talk on that level as well of more like, hey, you know, we're, we're looking to do this kind of thing. We It isn't really a technical question is maybe more uh, how, you know, a different type of question and <laughs> whatever that may be. Maybe it's philosophical, maybe it's man program management things, whatever. Um, we're happy to engage on that level to wherever you really are comfortable. So, you know, I would say starting that in the support by sending an email um, is probably the best way to start because we can get to it really quickly and, and, you know, get you in touch with the person that would make the most sense. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if it requires, you know, a, a call or something, like we're happy to do that too, especially when it comes to making sure that you all feel like you're going to be successful. So I'll tell you, and one of the things we had thought about, and I'd be really interested to get your feedback, like, so Anisha, if like part of the question is like, hey, we need overview of the technical, like we can point you there, or we need an overview of just what's possible, like what are people doing? That's where I think one of the things we've been thinking about, and this is a good time to talk about it is, you know, for the 2000. To 2001, 2002 year, we're thinking about what would it look like to have a program where we pair schools and we go through professional development with a series of two or three schools working through that together with one of us. And that will cover things like technical overview, what's possible, where you're at, what is the community you're trying to serve, right? Like, I mean, every community will be different. It's what I love about the domain of one's own space is there's no one way to do it right. And so I think we can provide the support and we can get you where you want, but it really is our ability to connect you with other people who are thinking about it, sometimes in similar ways, sometimes in completely different ways that help you imagine what yours is or isn't. So I think, you know, hearing that is interesting because I want to, and this kind of returns us to something we talked about in our instructional technology meeting is what would it look like to start thinking of like cohorts of schools that share some concerns and share some things they want to achieve. And I know, Larry, you brought that up as well. 
I really think it would be fun to kind of try and put that together. And if there is interest in that across the schools, um, that is something that I think we can return to because we throw out a lot of ideas. <laughs> and that's what's fun about the ed tech meetings is a lot of it's us talking about ideas. But hearing you say that makes me think that that might be a really good way. And that's right. It was referred to by <laughs> Taylor as pen pals at other schools, which I think would be fun. So good. I'm glad you like that. That's something we'll return to. Um, so um, I think that might be a good thing for us to take away from this, hopefully, and to follow up with you on. So I'll shut up, but thank you for that. That was awesome. Um, I, I'm uh, seeing uh, Erica in the chat um, is bringing up documentation. So the uh, what was put in there is either exploring um, different sort of user-directed documentation. Um, they're using the Documentor. I'm guessing that's probably the, the one that gets put on Domain of One's Own or something similar. Um, they've discussed press books. They're kind of interested in, you know, what else. Um, I'll just be totally frank. Um, and this is a Taylor opinion, maybe not shared by everyone, but like I'm, I think the, the documentation that we have that gets like, if you have a new Domain of One's Own install and you get it, is a really good start, but I think it needs a, it needs a significant amount of love. Um, it's obviously a big challenge because um, everyone's needs are are very different. There, um, schools use Domain of One's Own extremely differently. Uh, bring up the pen pals idea again. I think we could definitely categorize and say like, yeah, there's a couple schools doing that. Maybe not categorize is the right thing, but more pair and say, yeah, there's a few who are thinking about this in a similar way, but this in a different way. But that does make uh, documentation complicated. One thing that I don't really have a great answer for, but that I, I am starting to think about and kind of think about tools, because that's where my brain goes, is you know how we could make some of that documentation more modular so that people could sort of pull in exactly what they want in the order or, or category that they wanted and then modify it in certain ways. Um, I think it's been brought up before, but the idea of like using like version control things like Git could kind of do that, but that gets very complicated very quickly. So I think the, the perfect tool for that use case of like a community's shared documentation, but folks can customize it and make what they want out of it in a way that it all stays up to date is maybe a pretty big challenge, but I think there are definitely things that we can move to get in that direction. And um, I guess I'm just saying, I'm thinking about that too, <laughs> basically. Yeah, I, I do think that we talked about doing that in GitHub, Grav. There were a couple of approaches we had with documentation. And that is, again, another knot we would like to cut. So thank you, Erica, for bringing that up. And that is something we need to think about. And I appreciate that's another great thing about having this new crew in is they look at some of our stuff and they're like, yeah, well, actually, <laughs> we could do better. So and I like that. The other thing and it was brought up by um, uh, in the chat is for folks who are new admins and feel like they could use, you know, we do do the trainings. Um, usually once or twice a year. We used to go on campus and have them regionally. That's been made difficult for the last um, couple of years, obviously. But like if there is a kind of perceived need or if people really would like to go to one of those sessions where we have like a boot camp, let us know in the chat or let us know via email or whatever, because that's always good for us to know. We never know there's a demand. And then when we put one out, like we're surprised sometimes by the, the response, but we don't want to create something where there's not a need. So we'll try anyway, but if there is, I'd love to know that in the chat. One thing that I also think is just relevant, Jim, is you were talking about how Taylor and Gautam and I have this experience as former admins of Domain of One's Own, which I think has been really useful for me, at least, in terms of seeing where things could have gone more smoothly, um, which just has been helpful. And I want to encourage people who are saying, hey, this is good. It's a little bumpy over here. You should ask us. We're thinking about these things. 
also I'm putting together a, a poll just so we can get a very quick response. Yeah, about... we're pretty good at recognizing our own bumpiness, so to speak, in that regard. <laughs> but or at least uh, not afraid of recognizing it. Exactly. <laughs> Honest with ourselves. Anyone else? Other other things you want to bring up, chat about? We're here. Um, we appreciate you staying and listening. But now you will have something, let's know. And if not, we know you have a busy day. Feel free to go about it. But um, we're just, we kind of wanted to reach out and get a sense of, you know, A, let you know where we're going and what we're thinking. And B, find out if that's in line with some of the things you need. Because <laughs> that does matter. So, um, Pilot put the uh, poll in about a Domain of One's Own Refresher Boot Camp in Jitsi. If you open the chat and then at the top, there's a polls button. Um, if you want to fill that in, right. um, but oh wait, this is where we can play one of these. There's this Jitsi has like sound things, so here's one. I'm gonna put it. It's called silence. There you go. Crickets. I, I think I I've it. turned the sound off for oh, okay. the emojis though so i don't hear them so uh, some people might hear them some people might not but also i'd be curious to know you know what others want to maybe chat about in future community chats that's <laughs> always something i'd yeah. like to hear too so if you have ideas or things that you definitely would like to cover cover in a future month or a future conversation please list it for yeah you. and and I think the format for it is somewhat flexible too. Um, you know, I could, um, an idea that is kind of turning in my head right now because the pen pals thing has come up a few times is it might be kind of cool to do like a sort of breakout session and, you know, have folks work together a little bit um, and then come back to a larger group and kind of share. Uh, there's some different formats I think that are possible. So if you're thinking of something that you feel like wouldn't fit in, what we're doing right now, uh, don't be afraid to suggest it anyway. Um, we're still or experimenting. Maybe, yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think uh, I've even, you know, I, I think there's a lot of different directions that this this could go if people find it useful. Um, so, um, I actually really like Zach Zach Koble in the in the chat. One of the things he brought up is. You know, if you have the pen pal idea, not only for a domain of one's own and schools who are working through that, but then also for like Reclaim Cloud. And it does, it kind of one of the things we're circling around with the instructional technology, I believe is like, how can we provide like focused professional development for educational technology and infrastructure folks, you know, where it could be of use. And it's like, you have a learning community you can go through some of this stuff with and you know, get familiar with what's available and what you could provide your communities and where maybe it's too much. And so that's super exciting to, because that's something you can only learn by doing, which is why those maybe weekly streams of us figuring out something in Reclaim Cloud or wherever it might be, could be really, um, I don't know, instructive for us about where our strengths lie and what we can provide and what folks need. Because okay? yesterday at the New York City Digital Humanities, session. Um, it was interesting because I was trying to set up applications. I got two out of the four up and those were kind of like, those were planted. So I wouldn't look like a total idiot, but the other two, you know, they're ones I want to figure out. One of them is data set, which is a kind of tool that a lot of digital humanists who do data visualization and data work need. And I think we can get that going. I just want to work with folks to figure it out. And this course is another one we could get it, but that requires transactional email. So I kind of didn't finish it. But like that stuff, I felt like people were like, yeah, okay, I have a, better, a bit of a sense of what's necessary and what I would do if I was gonna go into the cloud and install something or play with a Docker container. And I think that's a really big part of us trying to reach out and build some of this community and learning together. So. I love the idea of the pen pals of the cohorts of maybe different focused ones. Um, that's, that's super interesting to hear that resonates with some people here too, because it does with me right now.
just want you all to know that I'm writing down the things that you, not everything you put in the chat, but all of the ideas that are getting put in the chat. So if you have more, go ahead. I'm uh, peeling back the curtain. We only ever got up to 22 cloudlets. <laughs> so resource utilization for this call in Reclaim Cloud is pretty low. Yeah. And I do like kind of part of that thing is like we're trying to use more of the infrastructure that we're providing and that's open source, which kind of also puts us back in like the era of WordPress and some of the older earlier apps. But then also we're running our newsletter in an application called Ghost. That's an open source blogging slash newsletter platform that we run on Reclaim Cloud. And I kind of like that we're trying to do this year is demonstrate what it is. Um, you know, the things we're delivering and building are things that any organization could build for their community. And that's kind of, you know, a big part of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, I think Larry talked about Reclaim Hosting 250 Bootcamp. Yeah, I do think a more like there is a a 101 bootcamp, but I wonder if there isn't like a 201 or a 250 or whatever, like a, a next level um, training. That's a that's a good point. And I wonder if we're at a situation where we have enough admins who don't want to go through what they've been through, say, in June of last year, but want actually a little bit more detail. So I that's like actually... That. That's where it's really like you know the basics, you've got you've got that covered, but now what? You know, what can you yeah. do with it? Where can we take this? What are the strategies that schools are using when they've had domain for a couple of years? You know, account cleanup, yeah. but also, you know, just pulling through site archiving. I don't know. Really kind of digging stuff. into DNS, really digging into database stuff. Yeah. Larry. I just want to stop bugging you guys. <laughs> So if you can impart stuff that helps us to do that, I think that would benefit you guys. I think that's right. And in fact, it's funny. It's the thing we're asking from one of our providers for the Reclaim Cloud right now is, you know, we want more training so we don't have to bother you because it, it always rolls down. The same thing you're doing with us, we're doing with others. Like that's that's the way of the world. And, you know, um, I think that's a good point. And I do think that um, I, I'm, I'm reading Shannon's philosophical question, but I do also believe that that's a kind of a, uh, it's all right. And it's all right for us to try and provide. And I think there's a, there's a, a sweet spot with professional development for our communities right now. And I want to kind of do it because it also allows us as we're growing to grow into a bigger community, which has been hard for us because we were like three or four people for most of our, our lifetime as a company. So it's nice to maybe have a little bit of a breathing room. But Shannon, wrestling with increased demand to be online, what does it look like to build meaningful online communities? Well, you know, that's like, that's what we tried at UMW, right? That was UMW blogs, like that meant something. You, part of you was on that space. And I think as the big social media platforms took over, not to show too much of my bias, you know, we lost a little bit of what that meant for, I don't know, a lot of things, but I mean, there's a lot to learn from them too. Like we saw that through the elections and politically. And, but I, I do think that, you know, being able to experiment as a faculty member and a student in spaces outside of those formats and those, uh, spaces is important. And I do think that they're there and available. I wonder if we have the capacity at institutions, given all the other things that are being demanded of folks um, to do that. And I think that's where, you know, it's, it's almost a privilege to be able to kind of imagine like that. And I, you got to balance it, I guess, but it is philosophical, but it's also at the heart of instructional technology, I think, as a discipline is at what point do we just go with the monolithic system and say, all right, everything's fine, time to make the donuts. And at what time do we actually say, actually, we can recreate what the experience is like in a new way that's powerful and that doesn't make us all feel like we're just watching TV, you know? So I don't know, like, that's the question, I think. That's the one I'm still chasing. 
Um, Erica put in, um, inter uh, they're interested in best practices on template and template development. Um, they had a faculty member that mentioned that Domain of Unzone was too hard for students to use and they prefer Weebly. Um, so that, uh, you know, building templates to alleviate that. Um, and that would be really interesting because I think um, there's a lot of different philosophies on like building templates and stuff like that. Like, so I just made the community chat one that we had the, um, sorry, the community site template thing that we had the last community chat on. And so I've been pretty recently thinking about that, but I will also say uh, when I was domains admin, um, I had I'd done a couple of those too. And I like changed my mind on the philosophy of them every single time I did them in terms of like it, less is more or more is more. Like, do, do I throw in example content or do I throw in only enough example content to see for people to see how it's used or do I throw none in so that they don't have to like delete stuff and that that's getting an obviously really nitty gritty stuff, but I know that's things that always come up for me. Um, I, I also think, and this is long-term, like this isn't going to be a solution next month or even probably this year. But one of the things that with going back to domains API that uh, we're really interested in on that is right now with domain of one's own or shared hosting in general, you know, you have to have someone lead you to that or you have to be the kind of person who's like, I'm going to read the documentation. Uh, it isn't self-documented in a way. Like you can't point someone at domains one's own and tell them to sign up and they will come out with definitely like a great site in one hour unless they've done it before, right? Because if you, if you don't know anything about it, you will probably sign up for a domain name or subdomain and then have an account and then go, okay. <laughs> And then you're left with cPanel. And may, maybe you've heard of WordPress and you're trying to install that. But if you haven't, it's really hard for people to know what to do. Um, and one of the things that we kind of want to do with Domains API is have sort of a sign-up process that's more asking people what they want and saying, well, what are you trying to make? Or, you know, and, and it could look at a lot of different ways. But like, do you want a website for a purpose or... Are you, do you already know what you want and you're, you want to talk numbers and, and like gigabytes of storage and things like that? Maybe that's what you want. Um, and that, that is going to be challenging to do, but I think very worthwhile. Um, and if is done well, could, could help with some of that as well. I think people are actually finding that they have to go. <laughs> and that's more than understandable. We thank you again for joining us for our second community chat. Taylor, thank you for running these and introducing them to our community. You rule, as everybody at Reclaim is. I am super excited. And that's it. We needed the, 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 those of you who don't have audio emojis turned on, you're missing out. It's magic. <laughs>